order of business, let's go ahead and grab the clutch perch. Put our bar through. And make sure we've got that. Next order of business, so we can use that beautiful hinge and pivot, is to take the bolts all the way out and lay the, the, the clip on over the top and now it just sits together. Now, we're gonna just loosely screw these bolts back in, just a few threads, so that the clamp and the handlebar are quite simply just in place. Okay, that bar is ready. Now we'll do repeat the process on this side. Once this bar's on, I'm gonna return over here and they're gonna rebuild the bars one at a time. One of the most important things to realize is that your housings for lights and kill switch don't just sit on your handlebar. At the factory, they pre-drill a hole because the plastic component has a protruding plastic dowel. So, if you wish to retain both the kill switch and your turn signals and other switches on this side, you need basically to figure it out where this hole is, the correct size drill, and drill the hole. And remember, the holes are on the bottom. Now, you could drill a hole in this as it sits and quite simply undo these two bolts, spin it all the way around 180 degrees, and you're ready to go. So make your choice, decide what you're gonna do. If you're gonna keep this, keep it, drill a hole, rotate it under the bottom, screw it all back together, job done. That way if you go back to street, it's not a problem, everything is still here, and you still retain these handlebars for street use. If you wish to eliminate this, then you have to obviously go into the harness, disconnect it, and then deal appropriately with the clutch switch. Now that this, our right handlebar is in position, we want to go ahead and remove the bolts on the brake for the master cylinder. And then there's an up arrow on it, so make sure that the component is sitting the correct way. And we're going to once more just put this on the bar for the time being. Now we need to put our kill switch back on as we are not going to rewire to a toggle switch or something else. We're going to keep our ignition. So we know that we have to drill a hole, the hole on the stock bar match the hole with the drill you need. Give yourself a little room here. The plastic pin is right there. So we need to come back somewhere in the region of five to eight millimeters here. Mark an X, center punch it, drill it, and that'll fit right in. Now we'll use a four millimeter Allen to loosen the bar clamp so that we can spin the bar appropriately. We'll make sure that it's still loose so we want to make sure that that fits appropriately. Now that we've found the locating dowel, the pin is set perfectly, we can go ahead and now tighten this bar. Next order of business, we want to go ahead and relocate the upper triple clamp first. So get that located and just gently tap it into place. Once that's secured, we'll go ahead and put the nut back on and tighten the nut to the correct specification on the steering stem. Now that the triple clamp's on, torqued, ready to go, our handlebars are still loose, but now we're gonna encounter some problems. First problem, our stock handlebar is drilled and tapped to receive the reservoir and hold it in position. The reservoir tab is even bent to fit. We just took this away. So now what we have to do, and you have to do, is figure out where this can be best put. Some people will make a strip of aluminum to go through the handlebar here, drill it the right size of the bolt, and then run it across to this and bolt it. Other people will run a zip tie through there and bolt it, a zip tie through the handlebar. Reshape this completely, redrill it. So there's many solutions you can individually engineer. We're just gonna do what best suits us to make sure this is secure and that when we turn the bars, the reservoir stays inside the fairing stay and doesn't hit the front of it. The windshield comes up and over, so I'm not worried about that, but it needs to stay inside the sock. Returning back to our clip-on segment, we told you we would get back to you at a later time and a later date. 
The reason for that was that we went ahead and secured and showed a, um, an installation on the Motion Pro Revolver throttle. So now that that is done, we know where the cables go and now we can go ahead and secure our reservoir for our master cylinder. If we'd have done that before and the cables posed a problem, then we've pre-drilled the bar for no reason whatsoever. So that didn't make any sense. So thank you for your patience. We will continue. So what we've got is our reservoir coming over the Motion Pro revolver throttle lines. We've got plenty of space there. The reservoir clamp, which was made from the stock piece, I went ahead and bent it in a different angle and trimmed a small amount off. Sits perfectly with no stress on top of the clip-on. So what we need to do now, let that sit where it wants to. If you try and push it in an angle or put it in a different place, you can see the Motion Pro cables here flex a little bit as I move it around. So just let it sit where it wants to. Take your marker pen, go ahead, put a nice fat mark, and then check your work. So what I'm going to do now is move the reservoir out of the way. We have our drill ready to go and we're going to use an extremely small bit and drill the first pilot hole. Then we're going to drill again with a second drill which is just slightly smaller than the bolt itself and then we have the correct tap to thread the bar and so we'll do all of those three things. Then we'll bring our reservoir back into place. Whenever you do this operation, I always go to the tap and die box. I look at the bolt. I find out the thread pitch and the diameter of the bolt, and I match the tap. I don't guess. So when you've drilled, tapped, your bolt should literally line up and screw straight in, no problem, if you've done your homework. At this point now, we know it all works. We're ready to bring our master cylinder reservoir over, put it into position. And as always, as we are going to the track, we're gonna put a little Loctite on there to help it stay properly. I'm gonna be very generous with the application of blue Loctite. And then we'll go ahead, mount that. And once we've got that in position, okay, beauty. So, there you go. Now our reservoir is secure. We can go to the track in full knowledge that this is a component that we don't have to worry about. And our front brakes do 70%, maybe 80% of our overall braking. For me, almost 100 because I rarely use the rear brake. So not to worry about this is a huge weight off my mind. Here we are now, done with our clip-on job, ready to go with our gorgeous driven grips too. So as always, we thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Performance Upgrades.